welcome. Thanks to all of you that have decided to join us here today, either live or watching the recording, another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Today, we're sitting down with Bill Schwab, CPA with your part-time controller, which we often re refer to as YPTC because everyone always loves a good acronym. But Bill's here to shed some light on using dashboards and visualizations for your NPO another acronym, nonprofit organization. Thanks to Julia Patrick, who came up with this wonderful platform. She serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm honored that I haven't gotten fired yet. Just kidding. But I really do love these conversations. I was really thrilled when she reached out to me in March of 2020 and said, hey, I have this wackadoo idea. Would you love to do it? And I said, yes. As the nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, I would be more than happy to, to fill in and help you as the co-host of the show. And we've done about 600 episodes now, Bill. Honestly, our 600th is coming up next month, actually next week. Um, and we could not do it without our sponsors, including your part-time controller. So thank you so much for that, as well as our other presenting sponsors, which include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, that's with the National University, Nonprofit Nonprofit Nerd, Staffing Boutique, and the Nonprofit Thought Leader. And again, another shout out to your part-time controller because we're just so honored to have these colleagues joining us from around the nation, you know, sharing some really high-level conversations. If you missed any of YPTC's conversations with us or any of our other guests, you can find those episodes on Roku, Fire TV, YouTube, and Vimeo. If you're a podcast listener, go ahead and cue us up wherever you stream your podcast. Bill, as I mentioned, you are back again. So you're not a new face. You're not a new voice, but this is a new conversation. So I'm excited to have you back. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me back. It's great. And congrats almost on episode 600. That is fantastic. Yes, thank you. And, and again, seriously, thanks so much to you, your colleagues at YPTC. Tell those uh, that are watching and listening a little bit about your part-time controller, what you offer as the nonprofit accounting specialist across the nation. So if they're new and they say, hey, I don't think I've heard this acronym before, tell them a little bit about YPTC. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'd love to say, you know, like you said, everyone loves a good acronym, but I always say, you know, you look at our name, your part-time controller, it's exactly what we do. Our whole business model is right in the name. So we are um, accounting and financial specialists focused on um, functioning as uh, outsourced controllers and CFOs uh, exclusively for the nonprofit community. So, of course, that's why we're so excited to, to be here on the nonprofit show. But also, you know, of course, I'm a CPA, but now I get to, uh, in my role at YPTC, like sit at what I call like this intersection of uh, accounting and technology. So where accounting and technology meets using technology to make our clients' uh, lives easier, their processes easier. And then as we're going to talk about today, uh, using uh, visual images to help tell clients' financial stories as well. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for that. I always think of your part-time controller as the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, because truly, Bill, like there are so many accounting companies, but there's not many that truly dedicate in the nonprofit sector. And I have seen too many budgets misallocated and just, you know, run amok because they didn't have that dedicated, your part-time controller focus and lens in the sector. So thank you for, for joining us and sharing a little bit about that. So we're going to get super nerdy. And I love that Julia put these glasses here because, you know, I am certainly known for, for my nerdy glasses as well. But we're going to dive into um, how people see these numbers or, you know, in these graphic elements. So take it away, Bill, as the data visualization expert, how do people see numbers in graphic elements? Sure. No, thank you. So it's all about, you know, we always say, right, what's the old adage? A picture is worth a thousand words, right? So there's a lot of ways to present information visually, to interpret information visually. But but honestly, you know, we say, it, it, we, we actually say, you know, very oftentimes when it comes to presenting numbers, less is actually more. You know, a lot of folks when they're creating a graph, uh, and we see this internally, even because uh, we have, you know, my team, we, we do a whole training program just on how to present compelling visual images to your clients. Um, you don't need to cram every little number into your graph. 
Um, and, and we have a saying where like every mark helps or hurts, right? So only put it in there if it's going to uh, emphasize the point or tell the story, uh, you know, that, that you're trying to tell. So it's not, it's not so much to say, we've got to put every number in here. What's important to say is, well, let's think about what the most important number is. And, and I think, and I know you have a slide that speaks to this a little bit later on about information overload, but really it comes back to, and, and, and it's as simple as saying, what, where do you want your audience to direct their attention, right? Um, and, and, and that's, it's as simple as that. It's where, you know, where, where in that graphic, uh, do you want your audience to look where on the page? And, and it can be a very simple visual image that does that as opposed to a graph that's got, you know, 50 or a hundred numbers on it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. You know, I always feel like, and we are going to talk about information yeah. overload. Mm -hmm. uh, our guest yesterday was, was a, a marketing representative with websites and he shared, you know, kind of these vanity numbers and then these so what numbers. And so I love that you said numbers are either going to help or hurt. Um, and I'm curious, do you share the same graphics quarterly, like quarter quarter after quarter month after month like are you sticking with those same graphics and just updating the data so it depends the short answer is yes and no so sometimes we'll design a graphic and we and we had this situation for a client where we designed a graphic and it was meant to be a one time just storytelling graphic in this case it was um, mentioning, and, and this happened during during the pandemic, um, when a client, you know, they were they were forced to cancel a lot of in person events and and things of that nature. But but through that, it, it highlighted that okay, yes, you know, your you know your contributions or your your event revenue is going down, but you're actually generating a lot more revenue from service fees and other you know other revenue streams. So. What was originally designed to be kind of a one-time storytelling graphic that we put in front of the, the leadership and the board, they actually looked at that and said, oh, this is a good thing, right? Service fee revenue is a good thing. We want to grow service fee revenue. And now let's take this, what was meant to be a one-time chart and kind of change it a little bit to now look at our progress towards growing service fee revenue. So then every month we, we, you know, we did an update to say, yep, here's Here's where you are. Here's how it's growing. Here's how close you're getting to, to your target. So what, what may have been intended or what might be intended is just a one-time graph um, in some cases might stay that way, or in some cases might evolve into, into something that's then presented on an ongoing basis, either in a same or, or a new format. <laughs> Sure. Great example. And every time I sit around a board table, Bill, I notice that, uh, you know, narrative versus a chart or some kind of a visualization of a graph, there's, there's way more dialogue actually that happens around that chart and that data visualization than the paragraph that sits next to it. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 we take you know we we actually um, you know in, internally within YPTC you know we actually you know we have an explicit standard that we that we follow and we train our staff on, but part of that includes yeah the graph is important, but it's more important to say what the graph is telling you right like think in newspaper we actually refer to it as a headline you know don't just say. Because you see a lot of graphs that might just say actual versus budget. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. Whereas, you know, a good headline might say, "Hey, our, you know, our our building expenses are way over budget." Uh, so before you even get to the graph, you know what the story is that it's telling. And I think, I think that's why some data visualizations might be difficult for people. It's not because they don't understand the numbers, but a lot of visualizations don't tell you ahead of time or don't announce what the reader should take away from it. <laughs> right. No, those are great examples. And you had mentioned earlier data overload, right? Mm -hmm. When do we reach this information or this data overload? Because I'm sure you've seen it where people just glaze over, their eyes gloss over. When do we know we've reached that? Yeah, I think it, it goes back to, uh, you know, the point, you know, what we what we talked about earlier when I said, you know, you don't need to put every number into the graph. Um, and I think, you know, I think that's, you know, that that's obviously a fine line to walk. But, you know, really, it's you reach that point where if if you're not 
if you're not telling the reader, and it's okay, like I said, it's okay to, to in that headline, it's okay to tell the reader exactly what the takeaway is. I mean, I, I tell our staff this, if, if you read the headline of the graph and you read maybe the little bit of narrative text under it, the next item you're going to get to is the graph itself. But even if you don't look at the graph, you should still be able to know what the story is just by reading that headline and that interpretation. The numbers, the graph, the graph is there to support the story you're telling in the headline. Um, and and I think you know if if you if you try to squeeze every single data point into that graphic that's where you're getting to that data overload point. You don't need to do that. You, you use the, the graph itself to support the story you're telling, but really it's that headline and interpretation that, 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 that speak to the, the story that needs to be told to the reader. I really appreciate the headline and the the you know uh, comparison to the newspaper because I can see that really directing the conversation. There's mm -hmm. no ability to interpret it in a different way. Um, so could you would you um, really dive into interpretation a little bit more and how you've maybe seen these graphs and charts being interpreted differently? Sure, absolutely. So in terms of uh, you know, we work, uh, you know, we'll work closely with uh, with our client staff at, at YPTC where they're, you know, they're preparing, uh, you know, a set of of monthly uh, monthly financial reports for for their clients. And it's very often uh, the staff our you know, our client service staff, they'll come to us and be like, hey, I think there's an opportunity to tell a story with with a graphic here um, or maybe even. You know they've they've picked up on it through through conversations with their clients because we we tell our staff we're like listen listen for clues because a client may not know that they need a graphic or that a graphic might be useful but just in in the questions they're asking you they might be asking for one without even realizing it you know like maybe an executive director is saying hey i'm reviewing the financials and and, and these numbers here, you know, we really need to, the board needs to know about this, or we need to highlight this for the board, or a board member might be saying, hey, I'm looking at these numbers, um, you know, we have a, a certain amount of cash. Is, is that enough? Is it too much? Is it too little? Yeah. All those are great questions that, that, that can be answered by, by, by a graphic. <laughs> And are these graphics and the data visualization, could they be used with various stakeholders? Because I'm thinking, what a fantastic way to share that same story in a visual element with staff for them mm -hmm. to better understand. Uh, so it, it, are they intended for multiple stakeholder groups? They, they, they certainly can be. And it's funny, we, we kind of train our staff on that. You know, we say, look, if, if you create a graphic um, you have to assume it might get shared, right? So Absolutely. make sure it either has all those elements we were talking about, right? It's got that headline, the interpretation, the graphic, and it either has all those elements or it doesn't. If one's missing, we're like, hey, it's not going to hang together because if it gets copied, if it gets copied and pasted and, and moved somewhere else, whoever that graphic had, whoever that graphic lands in front of, it's got to have all those pieces so that that new recipient uh, has, has all of those elements as well. But we actually, you know, we've had clients that have, have come to us and said, you know, they've, they've told us, they're like, look, we, we actually want to build graphics that, that we're going to show publicly, you know, whether it's on their website, maybe it's in their annual reports. Uh, so it, it absolutely, uh, you know, we always kind of keep in the back of our mind that you have to assume and, and, and certainly embrace, I think, the fact that every graphic uh, could potentially uh, be used and be useful to multiple stakeholders, both inside and outside the organization. That's very wise because nowadays, right, information is shared so freely, so publicly, so easily. Um, and then I also really appreciate that impact report or annual report of how you can continue to repurpose, possibly repackage. Um, so it, of course, you know, one of our live viewers here today, Bill, you mentioned is on your data visualization group with YPTC. How large is this group within your organization there? 
Yeah, so thank you. So yeah, so we have a group of um, five uh, full-time folks just within YPTC who focus on all things data visualization, but we also have, and when I say part-time, not that they're part-time staff to YPTC, but they split their time between uh, doing client service work, uh, so the work that I started out at YPTC doing, YPTC doing, being one of our associates and serving our clients. So they split their time between doing client service work and work for, for data visualization. So all told, um, we have uh, seven uh, staff members uh, who in some capacity are, are dedicated to data visualization, but we're, we're in the process, we're, we're actually in the process, we have a, an internal training program on visualization that, that is, is being rolled out to all of our client facing staff. That is fantastic. I, I love hearing that because, you know, this is something we need more of and more people to understand it. I can also imagine that some people say data is scary. So what are the keys to making data or data, tomato, tomato, less fearful? Tell us what these keys might be. Yep. Um, it's all about, uh, I think probably the, the, the most important thing is, is the reader in like you want to grab their attention and 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 say hey come in there's great data here it, it's not something to it's not something to to be afraid of and 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 we actually uh, you know i mentioned our, our our training program that we do internally we actually we show that as a comparison um with 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 two doors um the first one we say you know is your data foreboding or is it inviting and for foreboding we use, uh, you know, we, we use the example of a prison. We show a big prison with a large wall and a gate, and we say, right, that's an example of something that's foreboding, but it's supposed to be, right? You don't want, you're not meant to feel welcome. Obviously, that's, you know, when you look at a, when you look at a graph, if that's your takeaway, um, you've, you've probably missed the mark, right? You want to be able to invite the reader in. So, so the opposite side of that is we have this, uh, you know, this picture of a, a, a friendly looking door with, a, you know, some, some nice flowers and, and say, hey, that, that's what you want, right? And invite the reader in. And we do that to help, uh, you know, to help make the data accessible. It really comes back to, um, you know, it really comes back to, to, to how the data looks, right? And I mentioned that headline, that interpretation, keeping it simple, not, not showing more information than, than, than you need to on the graph. It, it, it helps draw the reader in, but also help direct their attention too, right? Because, you know, you and I certainly both, both know this, Jarrett, uh, you know, executive directors, board members, um, they all have uh, one thing in common, and that is they're probably all short on time, right? So, so you've got to get in, make your point, and and make it explicitly, and say this, this. Remember, remember those questions I asked, right? And if an, if an executive director is saying, "Hey, these stats, we have to trumpet these to the board," well, make make your point, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I I appreciate that. You know, I I have to ask this elephant in the room question. Should we as nonprofit leaders truly be highlighting and sharing only headlines that are positive or can we also share those, you know, in six months at this burn rate, our doors are closed? Yeah, it's we've it. it if that's the story to be told and that's the story that 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 needs to be put in front of the board, you absolutely um cannot and should not shy away from that. And, and, and we've, uh, you know, we've certainly had, uh, you know, clients where we've developed graphics for that, that have told that story. Um, and, you know, we, we try to do it in, in, in such a way um, to say, you know, yes, here's, here's the forecast, you know, maybe, maybe it's a, a, a cash flow forecast. Um, and, and we'll say, look, based on current assumptions, current trends, this is where things are looking, you know, this is where thing, things are, are, are possibly trending over the next six to 12 months, but try to do it in such a way that's also offering alternatives, right? Saying, okay, well, if, you know, here's, here's possible different, uh, you know, different options, you know, maybe there's some, um, you know, some grants that the organization's going after. Well, if you get that grant, here's, here's what that outcome looks like. So, you know, there, there's certainly, it's, it's never, you know, it's never a situation where we only, I mean, we'd love it, right? We'd love it if, if all we had to deliver to our clients was, was good news, but sometimes, unfortunately, there's some, some, some not so good news to tell, 
but I think a, you know, cause it all comes back again to how the graphic is presented and the fact that the graphic I think can help tell, can help tell the impactful story to say, yes, here's the situation. Here's what um, the organization or your organization is potentially facing over the next six to 12 months. But now let's talk about how we can address it and what some alternatives are to, to help address it. Sure. Thank you for that. Cause I, you know, I know we don't want to be doom and gloom, but sometimes we need to face that reality and share the stark, sobering, you know, data mm-hmm. of this is where we are. Um, I had mentioned earlier to you, Bill, that uh, I have a, a colleague that has joined us live today from Canada. So so glad that you're here. Um, and they they asked a live question. So I'm going to read that out loud to you mm-hmm. and, and see how you might answer this for them. So the question is, why do you think some CEOs or executive directors resist graphic reports to their board or disagree disagree on which numbers matter and might be right? Hmm. Great question and uh, greetings. Hello from uh, hello from Canada. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I I think you know in terms of resisting, um, I think you know, maybe sometimes, you know, executive directors or CEOs, you know, we, we say, you know, make the data accessible, right? But maybe sometimes the fear is, well, we don't want to make it too accessible, right? But, uh, but I think it's, it's important, you know, it's, it's important to have that, to have that transparency. So I certainly can understand, you know, maybe, maybe if there, maybe if there is bad news, an executive director would be like, well, we don't want to explicitly say it in a, in a graph, but, but I would, you know, I would counter that by saying, I think if there's a story to be told, uh, you know, a graphic helps underscore that story and, and repetition isn't always bad. You know, sometimes it does take repetition. Uh, I had a, a situation, you know, with this, with, with, with one of my, one of my own clients where, uh, you know, they were faced with, with a cash flow, uh, you know, a cash flow crunch. And it was one that we foresaw coming years ahead of time. And it took, repeating it various ways, you know, in the financial statements, in our written communications, in our verbal conversations, and then in our, in our graphical communications as well, for the board to finally realize, oh yeah, we need to take, we need to take action. We need to take action on this. Yeah. Great, great question. And I go back to, you know, the, the comment or question I said, and you answered, Mm -hmm. be ready for any graph, any data Mm -hmm. visualization to get into the hands of others. (laughs) And, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious. So the last question for me, maybe, I don't know, I shouldn't promise that (laughs) is um, if a CEO or executive director is resisting and showing that resistance bill, Mm -hmm. do you have ways and how we might start to, you know, like, teaspoon feed them some data visualization that isn't fearful and helps them to better find comfort and ease in receiving that that element yep absolutely so i think it all goes back i you know i mentioned earlier uh, you know we kind of you know we we tell our 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 staff our client staff this to to kind of listen for those cues right you know what what are the questions that your clients are having when when you're meeting with them and if if you see a you know an executive director saying oh you know i really need to um, you know, get a better understanding of, of where we're spending our money on this program or on that program or, or how these expenses are, are trending. That's a question that, that uh, you know, has the potential to be answered with a graphic. So, so, so maybe when you sit down, you know, maybe you don't put it in a report that's going to go to a board, but maybe in a one-on-one conversation with, with the executive director or CEO say, hey, I, I, I remember from our last conversation, you were, you were asking about X, Y, or Z. And uh, here's the explanation, but also here's, uh, you know, here's maybe a, a, a graphical way to, to look at the answer to that question as well. Great, great answer. I, I really appreciate, appreciate that. You know, many of us use dashboards and mm-hmm. that has data visualization baked into it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for me, really spending a lot of my time in fundraising, I focus on this, this data visualization, because I want to see the charts and the pie graphs and I want to see that, you know, the line items changing there. So I like that uh, approach and hopefully our friend up North did too. Yeah. <laughs> well, any other tips about making them less fearful? Cause I, I'm sure there's, there's many more. I love the, you know, the two door imagery. That's, that's yeah. pretty powerful. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, it's all really, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again, but, you know, again, it, it, it all, I think, comes back to just knowing, knowing what the story is you want to tell and explicitly telling that story and, and, and having the data support and your graphics support that story as well. You know, what's, what's that key takeaway? What's that headline? What's that, what's that interpretation? Uh, we always say, you know, tell the reader um, everything they need to know and nothing they don't. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and, and interpret, uh, you know, interpret explicitly. You just, you just, you just lay it, lay it out there and say, uh, you know, this, this, Hey reader, this, this is what you need to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I'm not done. So, so it, so it finds out how long does it take for your group to come up with some of these data visualization elements? So if we said, okay, Bill, I'm all in, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, we need yeah. to do more of this too in our organization. Um, obviously becoming a client with YPTC mm -hmm. is step one, but then like, how long does it take to create these graphs? Yeah, so it, again, there's, there's no one size fits all approach, but I will tell you, you know, we very often an associate, one of our staff members will, will come to us and be like, hey, I think there's, there's a story to, to be told here. And within, you know, maybe a, a, a consultation of, 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 of an hour or two, and then some work on, on our side to, to actually build the graph. But within, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, a couple of days, there's, there's usually something we can, we can put in front of the client. Perfect. I love that so very much. You know, these keys to making data less fearful is really what we need. This image here, right? It really has this, the analog over, um, over a female and it looks foreboding. I will yeah. say that does not look like they've rolled out the welcome mat. <laughs> So thank you for all of this, Bill. Uh, oh, you know, as, as we wrap up, is there anything that your part-time controller provides to our viewers and listeners where we can find more, more information and data for ourselves? Absolutely. So, so everything I was talking about today, you know, the graphs, the, the charts, how they look, we, we actually have a ton of samples on, on YPTC's, uh, on YPTC's page. So if you go to YPTC's main website, uh, there's a link to uh, our data visualization uh, page right from our, from our main page that will actually uh, let you look at some, you mentioned dashboards, Jarrett, we have some sample dashboards that, that, that folks can play around with. And also what we call our static graphics uh, showcase, which has uh, dozens of, of examples of, of real life. Now, of course, they've, they've all been scrubbed for the purposes of being on the internet, but every one of those uh, sample graphics that you see there uh, were, you know, were originally created for, for an actual client. So very helpful. And I'm going to pull up your contact information mm -hmm. for YPTC, your part-time controller, their web address is YPTC.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got the permission before we went live that Bill is very active on LinkedIn. I know we're connected and I appreciate yep. that. Uh, look him up on LinkedIn. He shares some great information as well as his other data visualization group colleagues and the entire association with your part-time controller. I learned so very much and really just have to say thank you because I personally have and professionally have grown through these high level conversations. You know, Jennifer Oliva joined us. Um, we've had Ellie. We've had so many amazing, amazing, talented professionals from the organization across the nation. So uh, really grateful to have your your leadership in the sector. Thank you so much. No, we it, it's a pleasure for all of us every time we're on. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so very much. Please do check out your part-time controller. Been a phenomenal partner of uh, the nonprofit show for Julia and myself. So thank you so very much to all of our presenting sponsors that allow us these conversations. Today was a popular one, I can tell, because we got questions. We had a lot of live viewers. We're probably going to, you know, uh, blow up the streaming channels by way of people watching the replay. Play. So again, I want to give a verbal shout out to all of our presenting sponsors that include Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy with the National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and our very own Bill Schwab here with your part-time controller. Again, thank you to you and all of your colleagues for not only, you know, providing this, this information, but providing your time because time is money. And if anyone knows that, it's certainly YPTC. So 
thank you so much, Bill, for sharing all of this wonderful wisdom with us. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And thanks to all of you that have joined us today, either live or watching one of our recordings. We're glad that you are here joining us. As we like to end each and every episode, we end with this mantra, please stay well so you can do well. Join us back here tomorrow. It is